Happy Christmas, everybody. Happy holidays. And welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ. And this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, back by popular demand today, my guest is Shane Martin from Shane and Simple. And he is kind enough to take a little bit of time away from his family to create their very Merry Christmas breakfast, which is a vegan French toast casserole. Please welcome Shane back to the show. It's so good to see you again. You're just a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, that's what they tell me. Uh... <laughs> Did you, yeah, you, you have a great personality, really. You are just, you're just a lot of fun. I mean, do, do your kids like you? Uh, yes, they do. Um, we get, I mean, they do. I think when they when we moved back to Mississippi and we homeschooled while we were in Charlotte and then our younger ones went to school and they would come home and after they were in school with all their friends and they would realize that because my wife is a freelance graphic designer and um, but they would come home and when their friends found out like we heard their dad's a blogger and the mom's a graphic designer and we don't dress like their parents and we don't act like their parents and so i feel like yeah they they kind of we're not as uncool as they probably thought we are originally so it's like yeah we have a good time i think you know our occupations allow that so it's but it's i don't know i think you and i talked about this the last time it's i like to have fun and i like to i mean there's a time to be serious when you need to but it's i don't know life's too short you know and it's like I want to do things that are fun. I want to act fun. And especially since we've been in renovation house hell for two years, you know, you gotta, <laughs> so. Well, I, I think fun is my favorite thing in the whole world. And and whenever I'm, you know, when I go to a movie or a play or just be, I mean, fun people are the funnest people to hang around. Oh, I still love going to go-kart tracks and water slides and that like roller coasters. I mean, I, I love that stuff. That's not just for kids, you know. So you're you're the fun dad. I try to be. <laughs> is, it, is it hard to discipline when you're the fun dad? Uh n no. I mean, you you know, I I feel like we strike a good balance in the home. I mean, like there's a I think there's a difference. What we try to teach our kids, there's a difference in fun and foolishness. Those are two different things, you know, so we it's very easy to discipline for foolishness. You know, if there's harmless fun and, you know, <laughs> I can turn it off pretty quick. But I mean, if you live close, I would invite you to every party because I do these things called. Well, I don't I haven't done them up here because none of my friends up here want to play games. But when I mean games like, you know, fun games, you know, you would be. Yeah. great. At well, I bet it's I, you know, I see you with Esther all the time. I, yeah. I, I met, you know, I did the. uh with, with Melissa Sherlock, the uh, conference out in Omaha, and I met Esther out there and got to spend time with her. And she, I, I can't imagine her not being fun. No, she's I mean, really, really fun. We, we, yes. we she actually came over for um, uh, my husband's birthday recently, and he didn't want any gifts. It was, just, it was right before Christmas. And so we played, you know, that game where everybody brings a white elephant gift and you see yes. So, yeah, we played that. That was a lot of fun. And I, I if can, I had known that I was going to like you so much, I was invited to Melissa's event. And it, actually, I couldn't make it. But man, that would, we could have really had some fun hanging out there. <laughs> yeah, you need to talk to Melissa about how that went. Everybody, I didn't realize, I love Melissa. And she reminds me of my wife. She's very type A, organized and structured. And when we got on and did our live thing together, I'm anything but, I'm a loose cannon. And I didn't think she realized how much. And so, I mean, it was, I was all over the place, just busting her groove and it was, but everybody thought it was planned. And so, but yeah, it was fun. She was, there was definitely a yin and yang vibe going on, but I could imagine if you and I ganged up on her and did a, oh, that would just be like. Yeah, we could, <laughs> we could do awesome. like an iron chef. Well, you're, you know, like if I, like, if I was a talent booker, you're the kind of like, you know, I, li I like the loose cannons, you know, because I can tell you this, you're never boring. Uh, no, no, I've never been accused of that. Who's, so. How are these thumbs up happening on my screen? Who's doing that? That's so cool. I don't know. I mean, and are I, you, is this going live right now? Yeah, we're live. 
on, oh. on, on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And, and I keep seeing like these little bubbles with thumbs up. Who's doing that? It's amazing that it's happening, but I've never seen it. Before. I, I don't know. Maybe it's uh, on Facebook. Um, but it's mostly a YouTube show that also streams on Facebook. But that's, anyway, guys, if you know, tell me in the chat how you're doing that. It's like magical. Anyway, so thank you for taking time away from your family. Yes. Life. By the way, those pictures you posted on Facebook, they were all making Christmas cookies and they look like yeah. crinkle cookies. And Yes. All. How did you do that vegan? If it was vegan, I imagine. No, it was. Everything was. So, you know, we kind of have our couple times a year where we kind of drift away from the WFPB just and usually it's around Christmas because Andrea and the kids um like the sugar cookie traditional sugar cookies and the crinkles and things like that and so um they um she just replaced my wife is great at replacing and figuring that stuff out she's she's a baker like she she's very good at baking and and so I just happened to stumble in that night and everybody was around the island doing the cookies and and they were pretty phenomenal, to be honest. As a matter of fact, I was up late last night. We had people over. And then after everybody kind of left, I was like kind of jonesing for one because I only had one while we had people here. And I was like, I was finishing up something for this morning and I found where she hit them. So, but yeah, I think she just, she'll replace, like she'll use like the, um, some of that country crop plant butter in place of dairy. And it just, it works. And but like we we were, it was so funny because after I took those pictures, I didn't actually have one of the finished product, and I was just taking the pictures that everybody originally saw, and then they started cooking in the oven, and she goes, "Oh y'all, y'all got to see this," and so then I had to get a picture to add afterwards. Yeah, but yeah, we we love making those, and so every Christmas, and then like last night, even before people got here, um, I was I, I made all the appetizers for our little Christmas Eve gathering last night, and they were still at the table decorating the cookies and the traditional like Christmas type sugar cookies. So it's kind of an annual thing. And so we just, it, it was kind of sad because our oldest eloped right after Thanksgiving got married and she moved to San Antonio like a week after they got married. Cause Aww. she married a, married her college sweetheart. They he's a just finished flight training in the air force, but they're coming in this afternoon. So so we had four of our five kids at home. So we're we're moving into that phase now. But it was it was good to see everybody around the island laughing, cooking food, and just hanging out. Nice. The true spirit of Christmas. Yeah. And you're getting the true I've not showered or we sleep late on Christmas. It's like a little after ten here and decided I would put pants on this morning before I came on live. So I think that YouTube prefers that. Yeah. So family show. <laughs> nice. So is this what you're going to serve them? I, I'm assuming some of them maybe are still sleeping. And when they wake up, you're going to serve this? We're going to do like a late brunch, early lunch. So yeah, we'll do this. And uh, so I, I put one together last night. So I can kind of because it takes about an hour to cook. So so I could kind of, you know, do the whole magic of television kind of thing. So after we put this together, I'm actually going to put it in the oven. So we'll have double later. So but yeah, we, this is what we do every Christmas. It's, it's, it was, it, you know, it's real interesting because I, I don't know. I, I mean, f food is nostalgic for me. It's, it's represented moments in my life of, you know, a lot of good memories. And, you know, especially when I went plant-based and got healthy and lost all my weight. Um, but the French toast casserole uh, was one that, um, the, the, my memory on Facebook was when my wife and I decided to pursue the blog full time back in, uh, 2019 and then January, 2020 just went full in with it. Um, she posted a picture of the French toast casserole. It was that year I developed that. And she just said, this picture holds a lot of memories and, you know, talking about seeing me become a food photographer or, and just, it was a new chapter in our lives. So, We've been making this for several years now, so it's kind of our standard Christmas morning breakfast. And yeah, so it's um, it holds a lot of memories, but it's just I was I don't know if you could hear me. I've got the one I just took out of the oven. I was picking the crust off of it. And uh, eat, so. <laughs> well, what's interesting is you have a book coming out next year about bread. 
And I'm yeah. curious, like, is there a special bread that you recommend for this casserole? Yeah. So um, I tell people usually like a really hearty, if you live near a bakery, like a whole loaf, like a really nice whole grain crusty loaf is really good. And I usually cut it up. I usually will take it out the loaf and let it sit out overnight. And then I'll cut it the next day and then let it sit out again, like to get crunchy and stale. And I mean, it's just these little bread cubes. I'll cut it into bread cubes, but like the hearty whole grains, I really like. And uh, if you can't find that, I tell people like sourdough works really well. Um, I don't like the soft breads. So like, you know, the Italian loaf, like now a good French bread um, works really good. But, you know, the uh, because once it soaks and cooks, it just, you know, has that crusty edge and soft center. So but but if I can find and oddly, oddly enough, because I don't have a bakery where I live here out in the middle of BFE, but um, we um, Walmart had these nice whole wheat loaves like in their bakery so i bought four of them the other night and let a couple sit out so but the i, I like the whole grains just because they get a little firmer and then when you're soaking it you know that doesn't disintegrate i would not use like dave's killer bread or thin slices because it'll just turn to mush it won't work so you need something hearty yes very hearty so like a good country whole grain hearty bread is is was what i is what i use Cool. Well, let's see how you do this. All right. So, you know, with French toast, you've got to eliminate the eggs if we're going to keep it vegan and healthy and everything. So what we're going to do first is make the custard part of it. And, um, you know, it's I always tell people this recipe. Yes, it is a whole food plant based recipe, but it's kind of like Dr. McDougall says. It's like a Christmas special occasion. So don't make every day a Christmas and special occasion, you know. But if you're wanting something everybody's going to love, I mean, we get vegans, non-vegans that absolutely love this recipe. So what I'm using uh, for the custard part is uh, the Mori New Silken Tofu. It comes in the boxes. And I like the extra firm because, you know, Silken Tofu kind of has that consistency of a boiled egg white. You know, it's real. It does. It's not like regular tofu. So, so I use that. And so I put that in my Vitamix and let's see, um, I like one and a half cups of, um, unsweetened almond milk. Now I like to use unsweetened vanilla almond milk cause I really love, and I put vanilla in it, but I kind of love the, um, that depth that vanilla adds. So I'll use unsweetened vanilla almond milk, but you can use plain, you can use oat milk. It's just I love, almond. I love do you have a brand you like? Because I like vanilla better too. Even in you know what? Recipes. Do you do you have an Aldi where you are? We do. I don't think I've been to it. Do they have a good? Brand? Oh, oh, we so we so one they're or we buy their organic because it has B twelve in it, and it's 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 just less expensive than anywhere else. And we have been buying Aldi's almond milk for years just because we think it's the best. But we buy the organic brand. But my wife, the reason we stuck with it, oddly enough, is um, she has this milk frother. And so every afternoon when she makes her her afternoon cup of coffee, she, um, we stuck with Aldi because it was the only almond milk that we could find that when she put it in her frother that foamed up and got thick. And it doesn't have a ton of ingredients in it. So... We love the Aldi brand. So we live about 25 minutes from the nearest Aldi. But when it's time to make a milk run, we go and buy six or eight jugs of it. So, but yeah, so Aldi is my favorite. That's what we use. Do you have Sam's Club by you? We do. Are you a member? Yes. Okay. So somebody introduced me to their vanilla almond milk and it's the best I've tasted. So that's what I've been using. You're talking about Sam's brand? Yeah, the members mark their vanilla almond milk. It's really a, it's really cheap, but it's so good. And okay, love it. I'm looking if there's an Aldi near me, and yeah, there's one, but it's in Sacramento. So, but I'm gonna definitely try it. Okay, well, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't realize that Sam's had their own brand. So, 
So you try it and then compare it, do, you know, do okay. it here, but, but don't look at the label, have somebody give you a little bit of each and see, do a blind taste test. Okay. Okay. For sure. We will. Nice. Okay. So we've got the almond milk and the tofu. The next uh, thing we're going to add is arrowroot powder or arrowroot starch, about a tablespoon of that. And that is, as it cooks, it's the thickening agent. So that's what's going to create that custardy when it gets with the uh, tofu. And so it'll kind of thicken and it holds, kind of binds everything together. If you don't have arrowroot powder, you can use cornstarch. Um, we got that. And then we're going to add, to sweeten it, uh, we're going to use um, maple syrup. And this is kind of on a preference. I've got a half a cup in the recipe, but you know, you can adjust to that. And I just poured in there and didn't even think to measure. So I think I put a half a cup in there. So I, that's terrible. I hardly measure anymore. So, but that's a half a cup is what's in the recipe. Um, and then, like I said, I love vanilla. So we're going to do two tablespoons, two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. And then for the flavoring, I used to use cinnamon, but I love pumpkin pie spice. So that's what I use to kind of to flavor the custard with. So uh, we do a tablespoon of that. And that is really, and then I do like a pinch of like sea salt just to kind of offset the sweetness, just, just a little bit. It's like an eighth of a teaspoon. So then and I hope we can, hope this doesn't deafen anyone, but then you just blend it up. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the, the Zoom mutes that. Does anybody know how those thumbs up were appearing? Please let me know in the chat. I, I got into the, um, I don't know where they're coming from because I'm, I'm online. I'm switching back and forth watching it live and it must be coming from YouTube or something. Hello? But I did hey, hello? Hello? No, it's not coming from me. Hello? Who's doing that? It's crazy. Hey, Shane, I like what you said about like not really measuring. And it drives me crazy when I post something on social media and they want the recipe and I don't know the recipe. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because I get all these comments um, and I tell people with cooking, it's like with baking. Yeah. You want to follow measurements, you know, when you're baking cookies or breads, you know, is it where they say cooking is an art, baking is a science kind of thing. So yes, you want your measurements, but when you're adding seasonings and flavors and things like that, like people will go, Hey, I don't really like the garlic powder in this. What do I need to do? And I'm like, leave it out. You know, it's not essential to the success of the recipe. So, um, but yeah, so I've gotten to where I can kind of eyeball things, but unless I'm baking or something, I'm just throwing stuff in and going and I can kind of gauge, you know, what I need. So all right, so I'm gonna tell you what, I'm gonna blend that just for a few more seconds just to make sure we're good. And I think we're good. So now all we're gonna do is I've got just a standard baking dish. And then you just throw your crusty bread in there. Hey, I'll tell you a little secret. I had a little mishap last night. So I had my bread sitting on the washing machine in the baking sheet to dry out even more. And the washing machine went on the spin cycle and I heard a slam and my bread was all over the floor. <gasps> That's funny. So I haven't told anybody. So I figure the heat will cook all the dirt off. For right. something. <laughs> they're, they're probably not watching anyway, you know? No, they're in there watching Christmas movies and so, all right. And then, so, and then all we're going to do is just, you can come in, Macy. You want to meet Chef AJ? Come meet Chef AJ. You're, we're, we're everybody's big fans of you. This is oh, my hi. daughter, Macy. Oh my God, nice <laughs> to meet you. Merry Christmas. Aww. She's at Merry Christmas. <laughs> They're so cute. <laughs> so. They're starting to wake up. They, they are. They're getting, the, so let's see. Then all we're going to do is just, Cover it. And and that's the best thing about this recipe. I mean, it's just, you can't mess it up. I mean, you're just, and then 
I just like to take a spoon and make sure everything is coated. Now, normally what I would do is um, it's a great recipe to make ahead because you can put it in the fridge overnight and let everything soak. But if you don't have that time, you don't have to, I mean, you can just bake it right away, which is what we're going to do today. And the biggest difference I've noticed is like, if you let it sit overnight, you get kind of a bread pudding type of French toast casserole where everything has had time to soak and soften. If you do this, you definitely get more of the crustiness on top with the crunchy, but we're actually going to make a crunchy, uh, nutty topping to go on top of it. And so, um, for that, we're going to use um, uh, half a cup of oat flour. Now, you can use, I like almond flour the best because it bakes up really crunchy, but I ran out of almond flour. But you can use whole wheat flour, you can use oat flour. So I'm using that, and then I've got a half a cup of walnuts. And then we're going to use just a quarter cup of maple syrup, just enough to bind everything together. And where's my spoon? I lost my spoon. There's my spoon. So this, the maple syrup is like, it, it's a really dry, crumbly kind of topping, but that's what crusts up really well. And so I'll kind of show you. So once you get that mixed together, you've just got, you've got like this dough. And so you just kind of drop it on there in clumps. And it creates, when it bakes up, it creates this really nice crunchy that's what I was peeling off the one right before we went on. I love the crust on this thing. And it's simple. It's just a little flour, maple syrup, and and you can use walnuts or pecans. But that's it. Okay, I got to wash my hands real quick because I'm all sticky now. But, well, we can just lick. <laughs> that's half the fun. Yep. Okay. Have you ever tried using date syrup in place of maple syrup? I do. I'm out of it. And you know, but, they and sell that, that, did you know they sell it at Walmart? Yes. They sell a lot of good things at Walmart. Matter of fact, I pretty much buy most, and if not about 90% of what I use at Walmart, because even here, Walmart has come a long way. But yeah, they had date syrup. They got nutritional yeast there now. I know. Um, uh, reduced balsamic vinegar? Yeah. Yeah, and even the one here sells some of the Wicked Kitchen stuff with De Chad and Derek Sarno, like their like their little oil-free meals, like their suits and stuff. So, okay, and that's it. And now we're going in the oven. So this needs to cook for about 50 minutes to an hour. And that's it. So we've got the French toast casserole. We've got the crunchy topping on the French case, French toast casserole. But to really take this mug over the edge and blow everybody's mind, I make a, um, a sweet cream kind of drizzle to go on top of it when it comes out of the oven. And it is phenomenal. So... I don't clean the custard. I don't clean my blender out because I'm like, it's all going together anyway. So for the sweet cream, it's a coconut cream icing. So I've got, um, uh, let's see, I've got one cup of unsalted cashews, just raw cashews. And I've got half a cup of unsweetened, just plain shredded coconut, just, and that's going to go in there. And uh, let's see, half a cup again of the unsweetened almond milk. Um, a quarter cup of maple or date syrup. I was going to tell you the date syrup on the recipe, I actually like better when I have it because it's thicker. So when mm. it cooks and caramelizes, it just, it, it just, it's definitely a different texture, so I like that. And we've got the juice of a lemon. And then a little more vanilla. 
So let's see. Let me push my stuff down. And we're just going to blend and turn it into an icing. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. <laughs> Hold. Oh. We're there. And this is, let me get a spoon. I want to show you this. This is phenomenal. And I mean, you've just got this awesome, creamy, whoops, there's my camera. That looks and, like the kind of frosting you'd find on a Cinnabon. Oh, it's so good. I mean, it's just, it's just good. I don't know what else to say. It's just good. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is. Because by the time you put it on the French toast casserole, so... Through the magic of television, we just put our French toast casserole, and look what happens. It comes out in a smaller pan already done in just a few minutes. So That's amazing. <laughs> Isn't it? It's crazy. Can your oven do that? No. Nope. Like shrink the pans. And, and then all we're going to do is we're just going to, I mean, you could be all nice and neat, but... I mean, you know, I have a little squirt bottle. I like to make designs and stuff, but but that's it. It just like that frosting looks like Cinnabon frosting, you know? It it tastes like Cinnabon frosting. I mean, look, I get cashews. You don't need to sit and eat a pound a day. But when I first went plant-based, and I think it was one of the Forks Over Knives recipes where they did like this frosting with macadamia nuts. I mean, cashews are miracle workers. I mean, what you can do with them, I mean, it just, like last night, I made a buffalo chicken dip. I made a spinach and artichoke dip. And nobody knew that it wasn't dairy. I mean, it was it was crazy. And there, I mean, and, and there were no oils in any of that stuff. So. On your blog, you have a version with mixed berries. Yes. So I did that for Easter. That was my Easter French toast casserole. Um, I'm going to pull that up because I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. But that's our spring. We do that in the spring for like Mother's Day. That will be like Mother's Day breakfast. But we'll do that one. And there's a there's it's. Um, let me see. Yeah, I think there's strawberries and raspberries. Uh, let me see. Let's that see. looked really there. good as well as an alternate. Yeah, thing. yeah I just, yeah. and Oh, yeah, because I use just a bag of frozen. So it's strawberries, blueberries, and raspberries. And so the the simple, the great thing about it is that it, it just uses the frozen. So you don't have to sit there and slice. And you can use fresh. But again, with the whole Shane and Simple thing is trying to encourage people to like show them that even making these dishes that you probably saw your grandparents making, like they're super simple to put together. And so just buy a bag of frozen fruit or whatever, the mixed berries. But yeah, it's a this one has I think has flaxseed <clears throat> and um, the custard doesn't you this one doesn't use tofu in it it does use like uh, air root flour or tapioca starch to thicken it up and um but it's still delicious so we do that in our spring that's our spring french toast casserole so it's it's not quite as heavy as this one because there's no tofu in it but but yeah and then what we'll usually do is serve this um, on the website, I've got, it was, I would say it's the first recipe that I developed just like from the ground up and didn't adapt from anything that I can remember. I just sit around when I was learning how food works and like flaxseed and oats and things like that. 
I really miss the taste of um, the savoriness of things like sausages and things. Not not the texture so much, but just the flavor. I love savory. Like a lot of people have a sweet tooth. I'm a savory person. But the and so I remember talking to someone. And they were telling me how they made their veggie burgers. And they were saying about if you take the flax and you let it sit, it hardens and it will firm up. And so I took chia seeds and and just basically looked at what people use to, to season sausage. And so I put all these seasonings together. And then for my base, I took oats, flax seed, and chia seeds and mixed it with um, veggie broth. And when I did all the seasonings, it was crazy. You let it sit for a few minutes and it firms up into a big dough ball. So we made sausage patties out of them. So that's kind of become our sausage. So we'll typically serve like, um, and you can roll it up, put it in the freezer for the next day and slice it and just stick it in a pan. And friends of mine that aren't vegan, they've had them. They go, these are awesome. They taste, they call them meat cookies because they're not as chewy like regular sausage, but they're going, oh man, it's like I'm eating sausage cookies. I mean, that's what they sausage call them. Cookies. <laughs> so, do, you, do you have a lot of vegan friends in Mississippi? No, not at all. <laughs> so nobody saw your over 100 pound weight loss and thought, hey, this might be a good idea just to try it. Uh, they, a lot of them saw it. A lot of them reached out, said, oh my word, what are you doing? And when you tell them you went plant-based and you cut out meat and dairy, they immediately go, oh, I'm not doing that. You know, um, well, why do you think that is? I mean, is it that delicious? Is it addictive? Like, I mean, I can, I don't, why is it so hard for people you think to, I, I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I think, I think people feel like, like my take is one, it's very, it's embedded in the culture here, you know? So it's like I said, you know, growing up in Mississippi, like we use porks and everything, you know, we grew up eating green beans. There was a slab of bacon in it. So pork is like a seasoning here, but, and then milk is huge. And I, I, I think, and, and I get this. I mean, for me, it was some of the same thing. I, I think people feel like they're going to miss out on something. So I'm never going to be able to eat a hamburger again. I'm never going to be able to, you know, eat the steak and the baked potato again. And while I tell people, it's like, well, nobody's putting a gun to your head and telling you you can't do that. You're making a choice not to do it. But I, I don't know. I, t I tell people for me, when I got far enough into it and realized how good I felt the, the desire for those things eventually kind of lessened, I guess. So I do know, so I do get that there's this, I don't know if I'm not a learning curve, but you know, willpower kind of thing you got to push through. But I, I think for most people here, it's this one, how can I do it? Because they all think this is, for the well-heeled elite, or that's just what it's, it's interesting that that's still the, the thought, like only, you know, wealthy people eat all this healthy food. And I'm like, dude, beans and the sweet potato capital of the world is 45 minutes up the road from here, you know? So we don't think in terms like that. And I think people get a lot of bad information. I still run into people all the time going, well, the carbs are just, you know, I can't do the carbs. And I'm like, carbs are not your enemy. You know, well it's, when people say, you know, and I don't like to use the word fat, but like when, when people that are overweight say carbs make me fat and they're not eating any carbs, I want to say, well, then why are you overweight if you're not eating carbs? Do you understand what I'm saying? I had a brother uh, actually, and he was morbidly obese. He said, I can't eat carbs. They make me fat. So it's my brother says, so but you already are fat and you're not eating carbs. So it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I was in a right before we moved back from Charlotte, I was in a, a little coffee shop. I used to go work and this lady was meeting another lady and, you know, she, I heard her over talking about how she had gotten on a diet and was trying to get in better health. And she was, I mean, she was, and she, she herself was telling the lady I'm medically obese. Like it's a danger to my health. And so the, the lady she was meeting with says, Oh, great. So what are you doing? She goes, well, you know, I'm on the whole uh, paleo and keto thing. And she, and so this coffee shop, I'm sitting there having like a, a bagel with oats on it and some oatmeal that morning. And she goes, well, I can't have any of this because it's all the carbs and that's what's, you know, making me heavy and unhealthy. And she goes, well, what do you eat? She goes, well, I, you know, so for this morning I had three sausages and two eggs and you know, and I'm like, I, I'm the same way. It's like, when you say it's the carbs that are making you unhealthy, you're not eating any carbs. It's like, 
you think that one piece of bread that you had because you had a craving is what made everything go haywire, you know? And so, yeah, it, it doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me, me anymore. And so it's just, it's, it's hard to figure out. But that being said, what's crazy is people are like people around here will go, Oh, you need to let Shane cook for you. And I'm like, y'all could cook like this. I mean, it's not, and, and it's crazy when I cook it, they, they enjoy it and they eat it. Like when I make meatloafs out of oats and lentils, they're like, well, this tastes like meatloaf. I'm like, well, that's kind of the point. And I, and I do tell people, it's like, don't go into this looking at a veggie burger and expecting the same texture or anything like, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not going to be like that, but enjoy the flavors, enjoy, you know, the way you're going to feel. So I'm, it, it, it blows me away that, and people like to joke with me, you know, and, but, um, I will say that a, a real good friend of mine, when I moved back, he's a doctor here about 20 minutes up the road, uh, Dr. Richmond McCarty, and he's plant-based and he treats a lot of his patients with diet. And he has seen the results like with uh, cancer patients and heart patients. And one of his big stories was he, he'll, before he and I ever met, he was using my website as kind of a prescription, like, Hey, this guy has really good, healthy recipes go here. You know, it's, it's going to help you transition. And one of his, he reached out to me a couple of months after we moved back to Mississippi from North Carolina. And he said, I've been following you for years. I use your website. And he goes, one of my patients told me you were living in Mississippi now. And he said, I don't think he's correct on that. He goes, I'm in Tupelo, Mississippi. And I was like, so I reached out and I said, yeah, man, I'm actually here. So we hooked up, started hanging out and we're starting to work on some stuff together. But I mean, so there is a plant-based doctor in this part of Mississippi. Right. This is incredible. Can you hook me up with him? He's got to come on the show. He's like probably oh, the only one, right? Um, in this area that I can find. Yeah. And, and, and Rich is awesome. He's super honest. He just knows his stuff and... Please you know, he's, me. That's a story right there. The only doctor in the bacon yeah. world. Have you heard? Yeah. <laughs> are you guys, you know, both of you should go to, you, you ever heard about that help conference, you know, with Dr. Columbus Batiste in Huntsville, Alabama? No. How about okay. miss that? Okay. Well, you've heard of like the Plantrician Project, right? You've heard of like mm -hmm. Scott Stoll, right? Because they, yes. they actually served, as I was mentioning to you before we logged on, they served some of your recipes there for breakfast. I think it might've been one of your French toast recipes. So they're going into the deep South basically. And it, it, it's, it's this would be like perfect place for you to go or present and, and your doctor friend as well. Check it out. The help conference. It's, uh, let me get you the date for that. Uh, March 24th through 26th in Hunt Huntsville Marriott. At okay. the Space and Rocket Center, uh, designed okay. to explore the critical relationship between social determinants of health disparities and the role of evidence-based lifestyle medicine as a critical and underutilized tool in addressing health disparities and reversing chronic disease and disease burden trend. Anyway, because, you know, that's the Deep South too, right? Huntsville, Alabama. Yeah, I mean, Huntsville is hour and 20 minutes from here. I think you gotta go. We gotta. Uh, so, what's what's the name of the conference again? I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna email you the link. It's called okay. the Health Conference. Help H E L P stands for Health Equity and Lifestyle Project. They're partnering with the Plantrition Project. Um, Dr. Batiste has talked about. He has a regular slot on my show, and he's been talking about it several times. And okay, Dr. Eric Wall. It sounds like amazing, but the fact that you know that uh, that the only doctor you guys should like really hook up and do something major. You know, like I don't know, like you make the food, he does. You know, I, I could I could see a whole business model with that. Well, I, I will tell you just to kind of float this out there to you. He and I have been talking together and storming together. He's always had a dream to do a cookbook, but not that looked like a textbook or a medical textbook. And so we're actually uh, brainstorming right now about how it would look, the layout. And basically what he wants to do is just, you know, have the medical evidence and the science, and then the recipes would correlate to the certain areas of the body, like heart disease, cholesterol, and things like that. So I would develop the recipes. And and um, so, yeah, we're actually working together on a couple of things that we feel like just are, I don't want to say necessarily as unique as they are. 
we we kind of a shane and simple thing kind of came about when i needed something i could follow you know like i feel like if i can understand it most people can understand it but and that's the thing i love about rich is that you know he's one of these doctors that will call out the healthcare system and he he will tell you his goal and he tells his patients my goal is to never see you again that's what i want and he means it. I mean, that's, and that's what I love about him. I mean, he's, and, you know, and he'll tell patients, I can write you a prescription, but I would rather not see you again. And here's how you can do that. So, oh, this, okay, you please, I don't care that it's Christmas, introduce me to him. He doesn't <laughs> I, answer, he I, doesn't answer. I, I will. I will absolutely that's, do that. You've lost a hundred pounds now, right? Is it, is it a hundred? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How long has it been since you've lost that hundred pounds? Uh, wow. Um, let's see. I went, it was like two weeks when I started, two weeks before my 40th birthday. So it's been over 10 years now. Or right you, at 10 years. Do you know that like, okay, here's another <clears throat> thing you need to do. You need to get in the National Weight Control Registry. Oh, wow. Okay. It's not a big deal. <laughs> they follow people like us that have lost, I, I forget what the number is, a certain amount. I, I don't, might even be less than 50. The, and and they follow us for years and they 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 track us and they, you know, data to see like what, what things we have in common. And, you know, there's a lot actually like, can I ask, do you still exercise? Do you exercise daily? Yeah. I mean, I, it, you know, I try to do something every day. Um, you know, um, whether it's like in specific scheduled workout at the gym or something, uh, but try to do something every day, but also like, you know, with, with work the last year has been so sporadic you know, kind of again, last year and a half working on the house because we've actually, since we moved back, had to move out into a rental and then move back. You know, a lot of the exercise came from after working, working on the house and hauling boards and crap and stuff like that. But, um, but I also tell people like, you know, have the goal to do something every day. And if something happens and life happens, you know, don't freak out, don't beat yourself up, you know? So it's, um, but yeah, the goal is to do something every day, whether it's a walk with my wife or, you know, run around the block or something. Um, it's um, the the accessibility to good gyms and stuff is still a little harder here. Um, and I'm a very communal guy. I get bored very easily. And so when I That's was in Charlotte, you had so many kids, so you'd have somebody to play with. I, that's it. Like, I, it's like my wife told me the other night, she said, at your age, at your age. And I said, okay, well, you get out of my fort. You can't come back anymore. So it was like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I put two links in the chat if you want to click out about the health conference and how to join the National Weight oh. Registry. Because 10 years is a long time. Do you know that most people that lose weight through a great deal of hardship, effort, suffering, gain it all back within two years and often more? Yeah. I mean, I remember, um, and, and I mean, for a long time, I remember before I went plant-based, I mean, I could lose weight very easily where I was counting fat grams or even doing like, uh, the Atkins diet, but I also gained it back twice as fast as I lost it too. And it's, and I, you know what, I'm actually, uh, a guy here I know started doing the whole intermittent fasting and eating in a very short window. And he was, I wouldn't say he was obese, but he was, you know, definitely overweight and lost a ton of weight. And I've noticed it started to come back again. And he's one of these guys, you can't tell anything. And he goes, well, you know, you know, intermittent fasting is good for some. And then the whole food plant-based thing with no oil that works for others. I'm like, no, it works for everyone. I, and when it, people say oh, that, that drives me crazy when say, when people say this diet doesn't work, you know, or they've tried, no, this is what drives me crazy. I've tried everything and they'll go, um, have you read my book? No. Have you read the McDougal program for maximum weight loss? No. Have you done the McDougal program? No. Have you gone to true North? You haven't tried everything. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I do get people like even on the Shane and Simple page, they go, Hey, I've been plant-based for a while and it's hard to lose weight. And I, I will say, I do think for some people it's harder than others, but at the, at the same time, it's like you said, I think for some people, depending on how their body reacts, you know, it, it, you're, you may have to take other 
um, extremes that some other people wouldn't, you know, and, and I think that's why, you know, I look at McDougal and I think looking at his thing for maximum weight law. And, and, I, and I think a lot of people too, it's like, I think you said you cut out sugar completely, didn't you, for a yeah, while? Yeah, well, that's the one. I haven't had knowingly had sugar for over 20 years. and But I feel, though, for people that are trying to lose weight, it's really the fat and the oil that's more important. Sure, you know, right. You know, I just, I, I think that it's really interesting because you said you're a savory guy. I always thought I was a sugar addict and I probably was for 43 years, but now this is the weirdest thing. Like last night when, after dinner, we were like a little bit hungry. Should we have dessert? You know what I had for dessert? Chips and salsa. Like I'd rather <laughs> eat. And I've been doing, it's crazy. So I, I don't seem to like desserts much anymore, even though I'm a pastry chef with a dessert cookbook coming out. But, mm -hmm. um, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. I mean, I just, I just don't eat sugar and, you know, because I feel like I just don't, you know, I, I guess I got a new book coming out. Oh, wow. But I feel like for weight loss, sugar's not the problem because look at Dr. Walter Kempner. He fed his patients white rice, sugar, and right. fruit juice, mm -hmm. and they reversed diabetes. I feel right. like fat and the oil that's the problem but also like i feel like you don't need to eat sugar anymore because any recipe anybody makes with white sugar or brown sugar you can use date sugar you can use date paste you can use date oh. paste. so that's that's the other reason it's like i feel i think it actually tastes better i love the taste of dates i i just find that they're yeah. great in desserts so i feel like there's really not a need to eat sugar but the sugar and the fat that's the dangerous combination you yes know, sugar by itself how many people go to twizzler anonymous you know i mean <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's the sugar with the fat it's the problem right yeah that's a great point yeah i mean but i do think like kind of your point it's like know your weaknesses know where you're most vulnerable and and i, I don't buy into oh just eat as much as you want and then you know the body will like yes you can nobody's going to get obese eating spinach and strawberries you, you know that's but you know, like me being a savory guy again, I struggle when I see nuts in the house or, you, you know, like just, you know, and you say, well, I only had half a handful, but if you walk by five or six times a day and have five or six half a handfuls, it's like, wait a minute, why am I feeling bloated? And, you know, like, and so one of the things my wife encouraged me to do early on, because I'm not, at, like I said, I'm not, I'm a very, I'm your typical creative and people go, well, what's that like? And I'm go. Well, imagine your web browser having 3000 tabs open at one time. That's a, you know, and that's how I operate. So it's hard for me to be quiet and sit still and journal and do things like that. But like I do, I tell people like if you can um, like make a note of what you're eating during the day and then go back and look at it. Every time you put something in your mouth, make a note. And then you go back because I will guarantee you for me, it was the same way. You will, you will have eaten things you don't remember. Yeah. You go, oh, wow. Write it down. Yeah. You're accountable then. If they, I've read that people that write their food down lose 50% more weight than people that don't. Yes. Uh, and I believe it. I, I absolutely believe that. Yeah. It's funny that you mentioned that. I literally counted. I have 25 tabs open right now. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't know why. I, it's just, it's crazy that I do that. I, I know. I, I mean, I get it. I mean, it's going to the fold. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Okay. Sorry about that. That is so. Do you weigh yourself every day or at all? No. Or if so, how often? I don't. I mean, I go by how I feel and feel if the clothes get tight, then okay, let's go check and see where we're at. But I, I mean, I think for some people, it's good. It's another accountability thing. Um, but I don't really see the point. For me, I mean, maybe some people would disagree, but I mean, it's like, I don't see the point. Like I, I feel good. Things fit good. It's like, <laughs> it, it, they still fit the way they did six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago. So it's, you know, it's. So that's, do, do you ever worry that you could gain all or some of your weight back? Well, sure I do. I think that's what, I think there's, you know, I think it's good to have that, what I call healthy fears or concerns like don't live in that and afraid to touch food because you're afraid it's all going to come back. But I do think it's like, it's good. There was a, a song I can't remember, but I just remember the lyric and it stuck with me and it's the lyric just said it was, a, the song was about being grateful or something. And it just said, um, the lyric said, there's no one more thankful to sit at the table than the one who best remembers hunger's pain. 
And so I think like, for me, that just means there's no one more thankful to remember like people who have been extremely unhealthy or dealt with sicknesses or, you know, just not good moments in their lives. You know, it's kind of like you talk about people that journal lose 50% lose weight 50% faster or 50% more weight or something like that. I think it's the same way of remembering where you came from and that at any moment you have the ability to go back. Like you're not barred from that. It's not like when Cortez burned the ships and the guys couldn't escape the Island. You know, it's like, I think it's like uh, the first thing I did was throw away all my old clothes. I didn't keep them. I didn't, I, I took them to Goodwill and donated them, got rid of them. So in a sense that was burning the ships, but I think in some way there needs to be this recollection of where you came from and remembering that at any time it's easy to go back. And mm-hmm. so I don't, I wouldn't say I sit around worrying about it, but I do You're think aware. I, it's like, it's a, it's like over here, like kind of. Yeah. I mean, anytime you drive by, I mean, I heard Rip Esselstyn talk about this one time, like when they were talking to him about barbecue and he goes, yeah, he said, there's a moment where I smell it and it takes me back to a memory, but that's where it ends and has to end. And I tell people it's like the, the, those our desires were, you know, we're these beings that are built on emotion and desires and passion. And so there are some things that are not going to appeal to us, but like smelling French fries or barbecue or a smokehouse. I, I mean, yeah, it takes me back and, you know, the smells, but I also remember how I looked and what I felt like when I ate that, you know? And so that's kind of where it ends. I'll enjoy the aroma. And then I go, okay, that's enough. I got to move on. You know? So I, I think yeah. the longer you're away from it, the easier it is like same thing with smoking. Oh, I, you know, it was, it was interesting. It's funny that you say that because one time um, when we were living in North Carolina, I was with two of my kids and we were in Whole Foods and we walked around the perimeter of the store from the produce section and I started feeling nauseous and like, kind of like I I told them and like one of my daughters said, daddy, you don't look well. And I said, "I, I don't know. And then I realized I had walked by the seafood and the meat department and I could smell the raw meat and it was making me nauseous. And so, so then when I look at it, I'm like, yeah, when it's uncooked, it's just not that appealing anymore. And then being, being that sensitive to it, cause I'd been off at this time, you know, like seven, eight years. And so, so moved away, everything was fine, but yeah, I think you're right. It's like getting away from smoking. It's like the more you're away from it, your body, well, I think it's like when you cleanse your palate, you know, on a, I mean, when we first started eating a whole foods diet, when we were moving salt and oil and all that, everything was just bland. Like it wasn't pleasurable. Like food did not taste good. But then it was like after about three or four weeks, my wife, and the way my wife says it, it's just like we made um, that sweet potato lasagna that we had the engine two cookbook. That's where I started with everything. And, and, I, and I tell everybody, it was like, one of the recipes I found for dessert was one of your recipes. It was a, um, it was like a chocolate pie with date nut crust or something Mm -hmm. that had peanut butter. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Nice. I can't remember if that was in Rip's book or we, but we had made the lasagna and then we made that, we found that. And I remember him specifically saying, chef AJ whipped this up and this was the dessert or something. And so we made that for dessert and then we made that raise the roof lasagna And I remember that night, it was like a switch had flipped and this had been close to a month. And my wife said, she'd asked me, did you put something like, and I'm like, no, I didn't change anything. And we tell people you you power through, you let your palate cleanse. Like that pie was sweet. The, the lasagna was savory. And she would say it was at that moment that foods became electric and bright. It wasn't anesthetized with all the salt oil and everything else that's and so, a beautiful story because it just shows that if people will stick with it this can happen for them too and, and water fasting actually makes it happen quicker for people that are in a hurry to neuroadapt you know yeah i've i you you recently did that didn't you yeah, I, but I, I, I 
I crashed. I, I couldn't day four. I, you know, <laughs> but 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 even then, I remember like you are so grateful. At, even if you only fast for like you know a couple of days, whatever you have after the fast, you're just so grateful. And every like the first thing was the broth. I mean, it, we're talking broth, and it was like, oh my god, this is the best thing. And then the second thing was some juice. Oh my god, this is the best thing. The third thing was everything you eat after the fast, and then the steamed zucchini. It, like you say, it's electric. It's orgasmic, and, and it it really it's it's an amazing experience if people can do it you know i yeah i had a friend that did like a water fast and he said the way he broke his fast was you know because they tell you don't go back into eating a ton of food you got to ease your way back in but he said he broke his fast with watermelon yeah and that's he a said, lot of times what they do at true north and it, it's it's amazing oh he said he said i thought i was in he said it was like living in the game Candyland. He said that's how good that watermelon was. That's how he good said, food can be for everyone if they stop oh, I, yeah. the taste buds with so much sugar, fat, and salt. And this is a day that they're going to do it. Speaking of which, what else are you going to be having today other than the vegan French toast casserole? So uh, probably, so every Christmas we we kind of live on finger foods for the day. I love finger foods, love appetizers. So what we're going to do when we hop off here, uh, we will do uh, the French toast casserole, probably do like a tofu scramble to go with it, like an eggy kind of thing, and then some of the sausages. And we'll just hang out, and then we'll wait on my daughter and her husband to get here this evening around 4 or 5, and then we'll do our Christmas together. And then we'll probably pull out all the appetizers that I made last night and, and some of the uh, meat, the veggie meatballs and things like that, like black bean meatballs. And we will probably just sit around and nibble and hang out. And so Christmas is usually for us, we started doing this thing years ago and we did it out of, um, I know you asked about food, but I always like to tell this story because it's one of those moments that I feel like it helps us keep things in perspective. So probably about 13, 14 years ago, I was in a really terrible job situation and it was the first Christmas and we just basically didn't have any money. And, you know, we had four kids and they were all young at the time. And we had decided, we used to watch that movie seventh heaven. I don't know if you remember that movie or that, that show. Yeah. Yeah. About the pastor and all the kids and everything. And they had their Christmas episode on and their Christmas tradition on the show was where that they all drew each other's names because they were such a large, and that's the only gift you got for someone. And the gift could be something you had or that you made, but it was to represent the person whose name you drew. Like, really think about the person. And so my wife and I, on a whim that year, said, look, you know, the kids are young. They'll get into doing something like that. And we just said the one rule is we cannot direct the kids on what they get, whatever they pick out for the, the person they... So we had two little ones that were a little older than being toddlers. And then our two oldest who were like seven and eight. So we all drew names, all six of us, just six, the six of us at the time. And Andre and I would split the kids up and take them and say, Hey, what do you think about whoever's name you drew? And my young, my daughter, Macy, that you just met, she was like four and she had drawn, drew my name the first Christmas and I had Andrea's old college cars, a Honda Civic, and I used to deliver pizzas in it in between gigs. And so it smelled like pizzas and pine trees, the fresheners. And um, and I left the window rolled down one night and it rained and the seat was all moldy. So it smelled like pizza, mold and pine trees. And my daughter, Macy, had drawn my name. And because we really didn't have any money, we said that the gift had to be twenty dollars or less. So our whole Christmas between our whole family was $80. Uh, no, like $100 with the six of us or whatever, unless somebody made something. But Andrea took Macy and a couple of other kids and she came back and she said, Macy knew exactly what she wanted to get you. And she came back and when I opened my gift, it's the first Christmas we did this, she had picked me out an air freshener at Walmart to go that clips in and a seat cover. And I tell everybody, and I'll get emotional talking about it, oh, but it just really beautiful. goes. Beautiful. And so, so we did that a couple of years. And then when we kind of got back on our feet and the kids were two or three years older, we said, hey, we're back on our feet a little better. If y'all want to go back doing regular Christmas. And the kids said, no, we love drawing names. So we've been doing that for 15 years. And so every Thanksgiving, we put our names in a pot, we draw names. And 
I've got some of the, like my son, when I was into the blog, he drew my name. We were living in Charlotte. He learned how to carve wood and he carved me a soup spoon. And, you know, and so, so Christmas has become a very, almost, it's very relaxing how I think it should be. And so, you know, and then what we do on Christmas is we all gather and the person gives the gift and says, Hey, they don't say what they got, but they say, Hey, um, I got this gift for you because it reminds me of this, what I see in you. And so then we always get an ornament for that person that represents them. And so, and like one, my wife loves the color green. And so like one year, one of our kids had her name and bought her a pickle ornament just because it was green, you know? And so the stories and the gifts, I mean, it, it just, and so to kind of relate that to the food, Christmas is just a very simple time for us, you know? So, and it takes us about two hours to go through all the gift giving. So it's not like one and done. And, and then we just kind of nibble and hang out and watch Christmas movies. Like it's a wonderful life and a Christmas story. And so it really is a time of where we're just kind of hanging out and even the food is simple. So I know that's a long way to get what you asked, like what we eat, but it's like, the, the the French toast casserole is usually the big meal of the day. And then the rest of the day, it's we might make cookies again or we're nibbling on the leftovers from Christmas Eve and just, you know, hanging out. So, well, this is the true meaning of Christmas. Well, I I want to be in your family. I never. have Well, been. <laughs> well, you know what? You have an open invitation yeah. anytime. <laughs> that just sounds like such a great thing. Hey, what's over your right shoulder? Is that like a cake or something? I keep looking at that. My right shoulder. This right here? Oh, a little bit more to keep going. It's like it's it's glass or... Right here? Yeah, what is that? Oh, that is the... Uh... Oh. That is the nativity scene under glass on a cake stand. <laughs> I, was, I was wondering, I go, that's such an unusual cake. What what kind of cake is that? Okay. It's not I thought edible. it was a, no, it's not edible. It was out of the shot because I had everything on the bar here. And so yeah, it's the nativity scene under glass. <laughs> well, I, I literally could spend all day with you and your family, but I want to let you go. I so appreciate you taking the time on the holiday, but I want you to come back as soon as possible or when your book comes love out. love to. And also either, and maybe come on with your doctor friend, or if he can come on by himself, but you have to uh, introduce me to Dr. Uh, Rich. I'm going to introduce you to Dr. Rich today. And so- Because if he can be a vegan in the South, so can you. That's right. That is right. Hey, yeah. thank you so much. I just oh want to tell you- It's always a was, pleasure hanging out with you is I learned so much and it's so much fun. Yeah. It's fun to be with another fun person. That's absolutely fun. <laughs> You get me. Somebody who gets me. Well, Merry Christmas, Shane, and to the whole Martin family. Merry Christmas, Chef. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thanks. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in about six hours for the Christmas hangout where you can ask me anything. Take care.